This is Saturday Morning Mysteries. And we're your hosts, Alexis and Grace. Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday morning or whatever day of the week it is for you. Uh, This is Saturday Morning Mysteries, (laughs) and we are your hosts. I'm Alexis. I'm Grace. And we have something very very fun planned now uh if you're familiar with this podcast you already know that we switch from different shows to different shows we cover them in crime cartoon crime comedy fashion so to speak (laughs) we started with the powerpuff girls this year and we're already moving on to our second show of 2023 and uh grace how excited are you for this one (laughs) we're gonna we're gonna say what it is in a second but i just Let's hype it up for another second here because we're both very, very pumped. I know we've been excited for every show we've done, but I'm like, I'm over the moon about this one. Yeah, Yeah. I'm like. That's fair. I might be the most excited about this one because it it was new to both of us. So maybe that's why. Yeah. I think the only other one maybe was like, I don't know. Did did you watch Rescue Rangers growing up? Because I feel like that was maybe the only other one that was new to both mm. of us. But I feel like this is a lesser known one. Yeah, I like but had also bits has... and pieces of Rescue Rangers. And this okay. is totally no this context. Totally new though. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, eh? well, a lot of people are probably out there wondering, what the fuck? What show are they doing? Uh, well, sure, everyone, the show we are doing is a classic Hanna-Barbera uh, animated mystery solving show called yeah, yeah. the amazing chan and the chan clan <laughs> i can't even hear the name without laughing <laughs> just the name i know the name alone when uh so grace found this one she came across mm-hmm. this one in her research for us finding shows to do yep. and she added it to the list of shows we like keep a list of all the shows that we may do one day just for mm-hmm. making it easy to pick in the future and when she added stuff, I took a look at it and I saw this one and I was like, well, what the fuck is this? We have to. <laughs> it was almost without even researching it where I was like, um, let's talk about this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, and Grace and then... obviously was like, OK, hold on. Two seconds later. Yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> you did like two seconds of research, maybe. What I think really put the nail in the coffin for us of deciding this one is that you looked up the intro song and you were True. like, well we have listened to this well we have to do it now yeah the intro song is fire i gotta say i put it right up there with like darkwing duck and like all of our and obviously the classic scooby-doo where are you but it's describe it for us really quick before i get into the actual show give us a yeah paint us a whisper us a picture perhaps Let me just let me just preface anything that I say about this song, this trailer, or whatever or intro music. <laughs> uh, ever since we decided to do this show, it, I guess maybe it's been two or three weeks now, uh-huh. maybe to the date. Yeah. This song has been stuck in my head every fucking day. <laughs> <laughs> I have so not glad. been able to get it out of my head. Thank God I've like had the opportunity to listen to it more times to write these episodes. But yeah, so essentially, I would describe it, it's like um kind of an upbeat jazz, like the basis of it. You know, you've got like the horns, like doing a little call and response, like bum, bum, <laughs> bum, ba-da-da-dum, bum, ba-da-da-da-da. It's like really upbeat. It's cool. But it's, the lyrics are very, very basic. Essentially, uh-huh. you have this guy just over and over saying the amazing Chan and the Chan clan, and that's a Chan plan. But With he's scatting. <laughs> he's but he's also scatting, but he's whispering while he's, he's scatting, which scat Grace, you noted. That's very difficult to do. Yes, a scat I've whisper. I've tried it as it's been stuck in my head, just like going for walks and stuff, like trying to <laughs> scat whisper. And it's very difficult. Like, yep. oh, so it essentially sounds to me like a guy who was listening to an instrumental for the first time, got in the studio and was just kind of like ad living to get a sense he was like trying to vibe it out before he took like the real take and they were like exactly perfect wait keep going say the amazing chan the amazing chan (laughs) say chan plan that's a chan plan 
Boom, done. Yeah. Guys, we've got intro music. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> hit, hit stop. It like wasn't even like the actual um like singer it was like the tech person who was like setting up the recording studio and like they were like playing the track back and he was setting it up just like um everyone go listen to it just find it on youtube the amazing chan and uh the chan Mm -hmm. clan intro music it's it's great it's It's a vibe though like the overall like the instrumental and everything is really good it's the whisper scatting is a little off-putting but then it gets stuck in your head i'm like oh my god who's whispering (laughs) yeah definitely at first you're taken aback (laughs) and then you also think that it's gonna pick up into full volume scatting and it doesn't no (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's just whisper scatting the entire time and think, whisper singing. Like it's yeah. all very quiet. I think it's because besides it's the like, instruments, it's a mystery show. So it's like, I think it's supposed to be sneaking around, sure. but yeah. like, you're like whispering the amazing jam from behind like, the, the shadows. Yeah. But like you're, when you think of scatting, it's very loud. And so mm-hmm. you got to figure out, we got Super. between now and our next episode, we'll look up who sang and or made this song. <laughs> wrote i don't think there was any writing grace i'm telling you it's like a combo of our speculation people yeah. just like walking around the studio like this is the janitor coming along to this dope like jazz tune like wow man this is so this was like a goodwill hunting uh, moment but <laughs> cartoon intro songs of like just a janitor who's actually a scat genius he was just sweeping up in the studio one day just whisper so he didn't disturb anyone you see all like the sound engineers and producers just turn around and look at him like <laughs> my god <laughs> not amazing genius it and he was never heard from again never. was he a ghost we won't they we don't, don't know and maybe that's the first mystery in the amazing jam <laughs> the ghost oh, whisper gosh. scatter yes man wow the show's great so yeah as you all can tell from the intro music alone the show is a banger uh intro music never fails all right Mm -hmm. it's always a good indicator of how the show's gonna go yes so grace (laughs) take us away yes so this show (laughs) where it's just it's so fun and incredible i'm gonna spend a good amount of time talk like introducing this show today because Mm -hmm. i had never heard of it we had never heard of it there's also so many fucking main characters so it's gonna be kind of a longer intro and then like a short actual recap today from me but i think that'll help set us up for success for the rest of this arc um and as Alexa said, this is a Hanna-Barbera show. It ran for one season in 1972. That's it. Um, in my research of, again, trying to find other mystery shows and make sure we've got a long list, um, I think there was, like, this direct response to Scooby-Doo that every other, like, production company had because <laughs> there are, turns out, so many, like, teenage mystery solving cartoons in the 70s yeah. like it was the cartoon and every network tried one they all tried to have their own scooby-doo so first this show we're gonna dive into our intro here follows uh the family of a detective named charlie chan and before oh uh, well, let me ask first bird did you do any research into like the background of this show at all a little bit but not go on though yeah i mean i might be able to like throw in something here and there but i figured you would do go ahead though mainly i just want to i'm hoping i surprise you with this information but i also like it's fine if you looked it up i should have texted you and been like don't read wikipedia i'll act surprised or you knew i was gonna read wikipedia (laughs) (laughs) but i'll act surprised then no one will ever know but me yes we'll bleep this part out it'll just be a long bleep (laughs) Uh, we're not gonna cut it out we'll just bleep it um (laughs) 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 but we're still Um, here talking we're just making the bleep longer exactly anyway um so before i even get into the freaking show and all the characters on this first character the main character charlie chan 
turns out our Charlie Chan was inspired by another fictional character from novels and films who was based on a real person. Oh, well, okay. Half of that is surprising to me. Which half? The real the, person? That, that, he, that the person that he's based on is based on a real person. Yes. I knew he gotcha. was based on another detective named Charlie Chan. Hell yeah. But I didn't yeah. know Charlie Chan was based on a real person. I only yeah, read half the Wikipedia is. page. Yes. yes. <laughs> Surprising. I could depend <laughs> on you to just skim. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so we're going to go all the way back to real life, to then the talkies, to then our cartoon Ooh. today. So we're going all the way in the way back machine to 1871. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. When Ah Ping Chang, which is his Chinese name, but he was later known as Chang Apana, which is like the Hawaiianized version of his name. He was born in Oahu and he's uh, the son of, I believe, Chinese immigrants. Um, and he was an actual detective in the Honolulu Police Department, where starting in 1916, he worked on an opium smuggling uh ring and like that was kind of his main um focus was opium smuggling and busting that as well as illegal gambling and there are like batshit crazy stories about him including um i mean part of this will dicey he was rounding up lepers to um send them to the leper colony we'll ignore that part Uh, of the statement okay um it was the 19 it was 1916 folks we didn't know what was happening. Um, but he got attacked mm. with a sickle and survived. Um, wow. Another story in which he was trying to do a drug bust and he was thrown out of a second story window and landed on his feet. Totally fine. He's a cat. <laughs> he it, it, those, That's nine lives right there. Cat the man. sickle, mm-hmm. check, the sickle. done. Landed he on went his to the feet lepers because he just thought they were leopards. It was confusing. <laughs> Uh, so then author earl durr biggers went on vacay to hawaii in 1920 where he heard about upon ching and his time on the force and like what just like a crazy person he was or like these like crazy heroic stories and so uh biggers went on to write a character inspired by apana into one of his novels And it was that first novel called House Without a Key that this character inspired by Apana Chang uh, was renamed into Charlie Chan. And in that Mm. first novel, he was like a side character, but he came so popular that he started to appear in Earl's other or in Bigger's other mystery novels. Um, And that kind of like started up this so-called Charlie Chan who in all of the books he just also made a police detective in the honolulu police department so it was like very direct that he was like this is based on you um uh, according to wikipedia and i cannot as always fully confirm this information so we are not experts I would say take it with like a grain, yeah, or professionals of anything. (laughs) Take it with like a grain of light salt because I'm sure there's some truth to it, some not Mm -hmm. as much as we would expect. But that's all to say that apparently in the novels, um, Charlie Chan uh, was a character who was like in direct contrast to like Chinese and other Asian stereotypes in America at the time, Mm -hmm. which like was pretty cool because it was like the early 1920s late yeah. late 1910s and like america yeah. i mean none that's any better but like was more aggressively racist i guess i mean again what what has changed but anyways yeah. like it's cool that he made this character like a direct contrast to that and like was trying to break stereotypes yeah. and so novel charlie chan got so popular that in 1926 Uh, films started coming out that featured charlie chan um i think the the film the film portrayals were maybe a little less um stereotype breaking than the novels were um i uh, he may have also been played by a white guy in the movies unclear so (laughs) 1926 hollywood um 
But the actual detective, our actual detective, um, Apana Chang, um, actually met uh, one of the actors who was betraying him. So, like, hmm. it was cool. Like, Biggers acknowledged that Apana Chang was the inspiration. He actually, mm-hmm. like, got to, like, be at least somewhat involved in it. And, like, hmm. that just seems cool. It wasn't, like, years yeah, after he died. Respect. They just, like, away. right. Mm-hmm. And they just, like, stole his life or something. It was, like, oh, hey. You're pretty badass. I'm a basic character on you. Mm-hmm. Come on down. Boom. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Come so check that's it out. Cool. Real yeah. Hollywood set. Come see it. Oh, God. Watch out for that falling lamp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. But he's a cat. He just pew, oh, yeah. dodged it, baby. <laughs> he's, got like, he's got like seven lives left. He's good. Yeah, he's good. <laughs> he's good. So fast forward to 1972 to the Hanna Barbera writing room where I'm sure they're stressed out. Scooby Doo's a big hit. What do they follow it up with? What do they do we now? We need ideas, people. We need ideas. Ideas, ideas. I'm sure some writer in the room just finished reading some of the the bigger's books or watching one of the movies or something like that that had mm-hmm. the character Charlie Chan in them again based on um Ah Ping Chang, Upon a Chang. Um trying to pitch a new show when bam they said wait they already stole this from something else aka someone's real life yeah. let's just steal it again for our cartoon <laughs> but make it our own mm-hmm. so they did and that's how we got the amazing chan and the chan mm-hmm. clan so like i said the show follows charlie chan who mm-hmm. is a chinese american detective who travels the world solving crimes not totally sure who he works for, who hires him. I will speculate about that in this episode. Yeah, okay. It's kind of like an international defense consultant, if you will. Um, and he does all of this uh, with his dog and 10 children. Yes, 10 children mm-hmm. who all help him solve crimes. And the fandom page say that Charlie's either widowed or divorced. <laughs> the show just never says just, it. No. Yeah. But he's a single dad trying his best, trying to make money, getting it. It's always take your kids to work day in his life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So as of <laughs> yes, Alexis, your thoughts on 10 kids and being a detective dad. So so many, so many thoughts. You um, can relate. <laughs> I yeah I know it's it's rough it's rough let me tell you Charlie doesn't have it easy no I just I have so much wild speculation too about his his employer the reason why his kids are always there it'll just be something we'll talk about it over the course of the eight episodes yeah I have just every episode I watch I'm like oh my god this anyway oh I'm very excited to hear because I am lost in the sauce about what the hell's happening (laughs) so as of writing this right now um i've only watched like one or two episodes and thus far i have to give a 1972 show credit for not being hella racist Mm -hmm. in a show starring a chinese american family who are just out there trying to live their lives solve some crimes and play in a band because obviously the chan clan is the name of the band that the kids are in like any good 70s show with teenagers Mm -hmm. so i'm gonna now describe all 10 children they look like what the kind of like one what their one liners are on the fandom page and from my watching as we go through these episodes there's 10 kids to keep track of it's tough (laughs) and in a new show that we're just getting to know we will probably mix up which kid did what thing sometimes they just group together by age groups sometimes i'll refer to like the kids the middle schoolers like the teenagers yeah Yeah, the teens it's confusing so again got charlie chan the dad he rocks this all blue suit sometimes a fedora he's very professional He's got a nice mustache and he's a little more on like the serious side, very professional, very wise. Um, uh, He's voiced, fun fact, by an actor who was in some of the Charlie Chan movies, not as Charlie Chan, but as one of, yeah, he was was in the movies. So that was also just like a nice little like, oh, cool, good job, a a callback. So we've got Henry who is the oldest kid, probably like 17 or 18-ish. He's got 
round bell bottoms, <laughs> wears a very tight orange turtleneck, so you know he lifts. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> as the eldest, he's very clearly like the head of the pack. Um, he can oftentimes get annoyed by like the younger kids' antics, but he kind of keeps everyone in line or at least tries to. Yeah. Um, then we've got Stanley Chan, who's the second oldest. I'm going from oldest to youngest here. Yeah. He is the goofball of the group. He throws zingers. He loves to be a master of disguise. He's got a green, green V-neck sweater. He's got kind of longer hair. Um, and as the second oldest, he often is paired up with Henry. They're they're the kind of two oldest, even though one's more serious, the other one's goofier. They kind of band together. So then we've got Susie, the third kid. She's like the mod 60s girly girl. She's kind of like the early Daphne of the group. Her mm -hmm. whole personality, I think, is being proper and pretty in, like, the short dress and, like, her hair done with the flip. Also, now my dogs are wrestling in the background. It's fine. Sorry, <laughs> Hi, listeners. Doggos. We won't be able to make to end the noises they make. Yes, yeah. one of my dogs, for viewers, fits the head of the other one in his mouth. Anyways. <laughs> you are Don't worry correctly. about it. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. So, then we have Alan. The fourth kid, in my opinion, he is definitely the coolest. He's got shaggy hair, the giant round, like 60s and 70s, like bright pink glasses. He's like mod meets, meets disco as disco was just getting picked up. He's got mm -hmm. bell bottoms. He's got the flowy shirt. I'm pretty sure with the vest and like purple heeled boots. He's fabulous. He is like the tinkerer and like inventor of the gang. Um, he created the Chan van, which is like their Transformers-esque mystery machine. Um, he is voiced by Brian Tochi, who was Leonardo in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in the 90s. <laughs> so they have an incredible cast of characters, yes. of voice actors. Yes. Not the least of which voices Anne Chan, <laughs> who's the fifth kid. Yeah, I knew you would have looked this one up. Yeah. So, I... We're going to build up to it. So she's like a tomboy. She's always proving she can do anything the boys do. She's got like the loose baseball tee and baseball cap. And Anne? Oh, Anne was voiced by the one and only Jody fucking Foster. <laughs> like, this is the funniest thing. I don't know. It's like fun fact of the day. <laughs> hey, Jody yeah. Foster voiced Ann Chan in the amazing yeah. Ann Which, and the Chan clan. On like one side of things, we should acknowledge that like there's a pretty even split of like white yeah. people voicing them and then actual people of Asian descent, which is nice. But yeah. I also want to wildly speculate that. Did 1970s two Jodie Foster get inspired by solving crimes to the point that she agreed to star in Silence of the Lambs 19 right. years later? Mm -hmm. Baby. No. And that tough girl persona, she can stick it up. She can she can stand a serial killer. Carnival, exactly. <laughs> a murderous I mean, serial killer. Uh, I both haven't cannibal. seen or looked up any statements by Jodie Foster saying she wasn't inspired by this role in 1972 when she was Ann Chan in The Amazing so, Chan in the Chan Clan. news. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. You heard it Jody here. Jodie Foster would not be where she is today had she <laughs> not voiced Ann Chan in The Amazing Chan in the Chan Clan. In 1871, <laughs> when Apana Chang was born, he had no idea that one day he would lead to Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> <laughs> without a pond of chang silence yeah. of the lambs the whole the whole Nothing. hannibal universe would never exist would so, never exist yeah, well jody foster you wouldn't have even heard of her never <laughs> if not for this mm. so mm. that's the biggest anthony Hopkins never probably. heard of him <laughs> who never heard mm -hmm. of him <laughs> so then we've got tom who's the sixth kid he's the total dweeb he's got the square glasses the sweater vest he's got the nasally voice and uses very big words that no one can understand flip chan is the seventh kid who clearly just wants to impress his dad <laughs> and his siblings i know he's and you're not done 
Exactly. I, that's why I was like, this intro takes forever because there's 10 fucking kids to get through. Uh, he is already, he's always like right in the middle of the mystery, but he easily jumps or flips to conclusions, if you will. Classic. He's got a neon green polo and a red cap. Um, we've got then Nancy Chan, who's the eighth kid. She's got a high pony with a purple polo that matches her pur- purple bow. Thus far in my viewing, I think they just needed another kid to make the eighth kid. I don't really know what her deal is yet, but the fan, <laughs> the fandom page, the like Wikipedia, there's like Wikipedia fandoms essentially for like every show in the universe. They also clearly agree that she's just like the throwaway kid, I guess, because oh. their description of her is <laughs> poor Nancy, slightly chunky and really clumsy. <laughs> Which is you know, harsh. it's harsh, but I gotta say that checks out. <laughs> the episodes <laughs> that I've that I yeah. have watched so far, yeah, she's always eating and breaking shit. Yeah. Yeah, so, it's very accurate, but it's harsh. It's a harsh, but it is harsh, harsh reality. It's, they're like, damn, we don't know what to do. We still have two other kids after this one. But they're yeah, like but toddlers. Do these little kids. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So then we've got Mimi oh. Chan, who's the ninth kid, and she gives off the like, I'm a little angel vibe. She's got like little pink bows and frilly outfits, but she's for sure like the bossiest kid um, mm-hmm. since she's like towards the bottom rung. And she always just bosses around her little brother, who is the youngest. Finally, we've arrived at the 10th child, Scooter Chan. He is six years old. He's got like a cute little bowl cut and wears a red sweater and hates being bossed around by his older sister, Mimi, Mm -hmm. who always says he can't do things because he's too little, but he's really ambitious. He wants to get right in the thick of things and often does. Uh, He's just a precious little kid. But wait, just when you think, oh my God, she's told me about now 11 characters. One more to get through here, which is Choo Choo Chan, which is their little mutt dog who's kind of like it's a combination, I think, of like just like to, to give you, you a picture. He's a combination of four things. He's like a little Yorkie, a little mm-hmm. cat, yeah. pig pen from the peanuts, and a mop. Okay. <laughs> what this dog looks like. And somehow one plus two plus three plus four equals dog <laughs> equals choo choo chan the dog <laughs> he is he's described as a dog but yeah yeah that's the only thing about him that seems like a dog is the fact that wikipedia says he's a dog, <laughs> a dog. yeah at first i actually thought he was a cat and then yeah. they called him a dog and then i was like is this a dog who got electrocuted and then i was like oh no he's just a combination of these four things <laughs> so yeah <laughs> and a mop so choo choo he's just a curious little mop dog animal electrocuted mop but yeah pet. animal uh pet thank you <laughs> who uh likes like the kids to get into little shenanigans and is some comedic relief so okay that was obviously a lot this is a huge cast Ooh, all right everyone stretch and i know yeah. truly take a coffee break go listen yeah. relieve your mind from that information with some whisper scatting real what if we whisper scat in our the entire episodes <laughs> like asmr what can I say? almost <laughs> isn't it weird it's very off putting i don't even like doing it, it makes me feel gross <laughs> um but can i too just say even though uh-huh. Uh, so I don't know if it's good or bad that they give this guy 10 kids. I feel like that could be, that could be kind of like a diss on any culture, honestly. Like, oh, uh-huh. but I will say it's very nice that they gave each kid like very distinctive, like, like features and yes. like haircuts and outfits and stuff and characteristics yes. in general. Just another like, nod and thumbs up to i agree like for 1972 right 72 yeah 72 yeah like 
good, good on them. Yeah. Good on them. And none of them are like, like what you would call like, oh, that's a stereotypical or like an offensive, like Asian, you know, yeah. depicting character. It's like, no, they're yeah, all just like normal kids doing just like totally normal things where yeah so it's like very very good job like what happened why why didn't this continue on imagine where we would be as a country it's it's probably because they did a good job being like they're first and foremost 10 teenage kids who are solving crimes with their actual professional detective dad who also just happened to be Chinese American, not the yeah, other way exactly. around. Exactly. Like you could you could input any race of a family into this show and like yeah. it would be the same. They were just like, yeah, these are just no- just normal people. Like, yeah, I think you. that's a great yeah. point and call out. And is probably exactly yeah. why in 1972 it didn't get a second season because they did yeah. a good job. <laughs> and America was like, wait a second. What is this? <laughs> what? We need more yeah. racism in our cartoons, damn it. Right. It's for our children. <laughs> Think of the kids. <laughs> Think of the children. <laughs> so, Anyways. On to our actual episode here. Yes. And like any good cartoon of the 20th century, I wish I was joking. Because I, again, I always start off with the first episodes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But like I've said before, every good cartoon starts out mystery cartoon first episode in the Uh, goddamn city museum (laughs) such a good entry point it's such a good entry point (laughs) yes it literally starts in the city museum of whatever freaking town they're in i don't know so boy my favorite setup for a show obviously and again going to my own personal theory of art thieving was ingrained in me Mm-hmm. as that would be crazy and must happen all the time because every show told me that it did exactly. so anyways we start out on a preview night of the new exhibition that's opening to the public to the next day and it's a private showing you know probably for like investor or like i guess donors to the museum um of the burmese crown jewels and these jewels are displayed in this like uh like kind of like flat giant like display case not giant i guess like large display case where it's covered in glass and you're kind of looking down upon all of the jewels um it's got diamonds it's got gold it's got rare gems all the it's razzle dazzle sparkly exactly razzle <laughs> freaking dazzle the usual and we learn that the chan clan the family is there on this pre unite Uh, specifically because they helped arrange the security arrangements for the jewels. So we've got them. They kind of were like the, uh, I guess, like the architects to how to protect these jewels. Mm -hmm. Uh, But we also have the security officer there, Johnson, who is just on duty for the night, you know, ready to be of help. We have the museum curator who... Sounds like Igor the entire time. He doesn't oh. look like Igor at all. He just looks like a little nerdy, but he's like, ah, yes, perfect. The jewels are here. I can't do Igor, actually. How do you do a Transylvania accent? Uh, uh, the jewels. I'm just, what? I, I don't fucking know how to do it. Erase all of that. I, I don't know what it <laughs> Erase is. Erase all But he sounds like pictures. Igor, okay? <laughs> we'll bleep it out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this whole part's also just going to be bleeped. Half of this episode is just a long beat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, yes, so we've got the curator who, uh, after he shows off the exhibition to all the donors, he like sees everyone out and says good night. And then all that's left in the museum with Johnson, the chance, and the curator is the collection's owner, who is Lord Buckley from England. Um, he's obviously there. He wanted to be there for the preview night. This makes sense. He wanted to ensure his collection is well taken care of. And, you know, in talking about stereotypes, which ones are and aren't okay, like every good depiction of a British man in the 70s, he's got a bowler. He's got a cane. I loved it. (laughs) The proper (laughs) British Lord. Right. Um, so I'm, I was here for it. I was like, yes. I hope he had a high pitched accent nasally i can't remember because i was so taken aback by the igor accent that i can't do Uh, yes (laughs) so uh again the rest of the guests all leave say good night 
Uh, and Lord Buckley wants one more assurance that his jewels will be kept safe. Um, he's obviously, it's opening to the public tomorrow. It's a lot of his fucking money in there. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the curator, Johnson, the security guard, and Charlie Chan all laugh, like kind of laugh at the comment. And they show off. They're like, no, 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 no. Take one more look at our security arrangements. <laughs> this is what uh, Charlie Chan set up. That basically the curator turns a key to like the on switch, which then sets off or like turns on like a motion detector system. And when mm. the motion detectors go off, an alarm goes off, which good, it'll notify Johnson. But then okay. it triggers a mechanism that like slams down metal bars pumping oh. with electricity. <laughs> Whoa. All around the um, you said jewel. You case. said Charlie set this up, right? Yeah, yeah. This must yeah. what happened to Choo Choo. I bet is that and... he got too close to one of the like, electric electrocution. Like, set it down when Choo Choo was on the thing they were trying to protect. <laughs> exactly. Right. Um, wow. This adds yep. to my wild speculation about Charlie Chan. Oh, okay. I'm very excited. So, yeah. um, yes. So Charlie Chan not fucking around. He was clearly hired for a reason. So mm -hmm. they're like, see we got it and they you know turn it off like take one more look at the jewels and stuff little choo-choo is like um uh jumping up on the like display case being like what's in here like what's going on because he's allowed to he kind of is allowed to come out now all the guests are gone and again he's mm -hmm. just a cute little our little mop dog pet. is like <laughs> sniffing around yeah mop pet <laughs> our mop our uh, mop <laughs> our so, pet mop our pet mop <laughs> I mean, it was the 70s. They had pet rocks. True. Back True. in the day. Chia pets. Chia pets. It was a wild all time. Pets, uh, all the same thing, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, as all this is happening uh, and the guests are gone, the Chan kids are still waiting around for their dad to be done, you know, talking business and security with the, the other adults. So Henry and Stanley, again, the oldest, are strolling through the museum when they pass a phone booth and actually see that someone is still inside or is inside it and they thought all the guests left. And they mm -hmm. overhear this man saying, everything's right on schedule. I'll knock this job off in 15 minutes. You'll be at the side door and I'll let you in. So immediately these two oldest boys clock this as suspicious as fuck and plan to follow this dude. But at the same time, Mimi realizes that Choo Choo, again, little Doge who was sniffing around, Mop Doge, mm -hmm. um, he has run off. They don't know where yeah. he went. He was sniffing the display case. And then they, he just ran off somewhere. So they're like, yeah. God damn, we got a dog loose in the museum. <laughs> yeah. Like, fuck, okay, we got to go find Choo Choo. So the, Chan, like the rest of the Chan kids, Johnson, the curator, and Lord Buckley... Uh, all split up to just like go grab him um, throughout the summer in the museum. Luckily, one of them, who knows which child, uh, I think it's, it's actually Mimi. Um, she's like carrying him around and he's like slightly too, he's like the same size as her. It's actually pretty cute. Um, but they're able to find Choo Choo and they all regather in the main gallery. However, Charlie Chan points out, well, the dog's no longer missing, but the crown jewels are. Aww. You hate to see it happen. Dang. Yes. In that what time. A I know what a conundrum. What mm. a what a goof him up. So <laughs> Choo Choo again was found and the jewels were stolen. So Choo Choo immediately runs back to the display case and like jumps on it again, and starts sniffing around. He's on the job immediately. This good. smart little pup. Good um, boy. Yes, Pet. a good boy. Yeah on the hunt for the thief um stanley again second oldest with the zingers says what i believe is his catchphrase wham bam we're in a jam mm -hmm. says it every episode at least so far so immediately lord buckley is understandably really fucking pissed off like he just said he was worried about his jewels and then they immediately you said stolen. no yeah. yeah you said everything was fine it literally like, took five minutes, five minutes. <laughs> yeah, not later. even maybe <laughs> yeah not and even. gone um and uh lord buckley is yelling at the curator about this and then 
horribly starts blaming immediately just the security offered Johnson. He's like stumbling over his words at this accusation. Johnson's denying it. Flip, who again wants to be in the middle of things, wants to impress everyone, is like getting in the security officer's face. And he's like poking him. He's like, you'll need a better alibi than that. Um, and so Flip is also accusing him and is saying that he must have passed the jewels to some accomplice. And Henry and Stanley, the oldest, overhear all of this. And they're like, oh, shit, the guy from the phone booth who kind of like disappeared from our view. I bet that was the accomplice. Let's go mm. find him. Mm. So the curator calls the police, which I think that, again, yeah, it means the chans are like a hired special uh security force you're we can talk about it in your episode because mm-hmm. mine again is gonna be real long because all this introduction stuff so <laughs> yeah not official law enforcement but the police are on the way mm-hmm. but so the whole family immediately splits and decides to start doing some like pre-detective work i guess not securing the crime scene <laughs> so henry and stanley are walking through the museum trying to find the guy from the phone booth and they were walking through like a ice age exhibit full of cavemen which shout out to the cincinnati museum because they totally had one of those and it was my favorite exhibit in the world (laughs) but one of the cavemen suddenly starts moving and grabs stanley by the mouth and like lifts him up by the mouth and like neck unclear if he's trying to strangle him either way stanley is able to wiggle out yeah he's he's a string bean kind of guy yeah, he yeah. has full-on assault, attempted murder of a child. Perhaps. Uh, yes, perhaps. But they chase each other through the museum until Stanley is able to shake his pursuer and meets back up with Henry through the Chancom, which is, they've got really cool tech, I will say. It's yeah. like walkie-talkie watches that all the kids have with each other. Yeah. We love it. So, meanwhile, the youngest, Scooter and Mimi, are with Choo Choo, just in the outside grounds of the museum with a flashlight crawling around in the bushes. No one was like, we should keep the smallest children inside. They were like, y'all take the outside. Oh, there's a thief on the loose. (laughs) You got it. You guys get the perimeter. Yeah. Take the dog with you. Take mop dog with you. It'll be fine. So yes, they are crawling through the- oldest one outside is like nine. (laughs) No, uh, six and seven. (laughs) literal children um oh my God. so yes their theory is that maybe the thief like tossed the jewels outside to come back for later or they might find just a clue which they do find a set of footprints and you know what it was smart of them to send these literal children out there because this little genius six-year-old scooter whips out supplies to make a plaster cast of the footprints to eventually match with the thief. Yeah, he like starts pouring like the plaster. But it immediately falls apart because Choo Choo just walks through the plaster molds and ruins the evidence. Luckily, though, I guess the cops do arrive um, and Lord Buckley, uh, Charlie Chan, and I think like Johnson are explaining and there was no witnesses because everyone was looking for Choo Choo, which the cops are like, well, that's pretty fucking unhelpful. Like, <laughs> that's super unfortunate. Thanks. <laughs> which they do blatantly say, like, this is unhelpful. But Charlie Chan says, oh, no, Choo Choo, it turns out, is very helpful. So helpful, in fact, that I now know where the jewels are. Oh. Which the cops are probably like, that's suspicious. Yeah, I did you know I steal them for you? Yeah. Are you admitting <laughs> to this right now? But that moment gets interrupted as the curator runs out of his office into the exhibit, waving a note that he just found. And he passes it directly to the cop and everyone reads the note, which says, if you want the jewels back, keep the police away, which too late, and have $100,000 ready to pay off tonight. So Charlie Chan says, you got to pay this ransom, which uh, they're like, didn't you just say you knew where the jewels were? We don't want to do this. But Charlie Chan is like, well, I know where the jewels are, but I don't know who took them. So the money 
should be the bait to get the thief in here or wherever we're going to do this exchange. Um, and the cops are like, I, you want to do the ransom exchange? Thanks. So I guess he's for hire for anything. Like, I don't know why yeah. officer isn't going to do the ransom exchange. They're essentially Whatever. just like, let us know when someone needs to be arrested. Like we don't, <laughs> yeah. we don't have the resources to do all of the, like you yeah. do. I mean, in, they in were, reality, they definitely do. They're like, we don't give a fuck about this like museum, like whatever. This I, is Lord whatever's right. problem. Like yeah, just tell like, us when someone needs British. to be arrested. We'll come back. <laughs> I mean, that's literally correct. Cause they were like, what, what's the, who are the witnesses and evidence you found? Oh, no, yeah. that's unhelpful. It's it's all adding it's, up. Like he's a known detective. I think like every yes. law enforcement agency knows like, oh shit, Charlie Chan's here. Like, let him take over. Just yeah. tell us when they someone's like, got to bit get booked. <laughs> they didn't even question, like, okay, yeah. cool. You're gonna do the ransom. Thanks. Mm-hmm. So um smartly, Charlie Chan brings all the kids home. Um, instead of just being like, let's go on this ransom hunt. He's like, We're going home. You y'all can you kids need to like have your dinner and do your homework. Um oh, that's right. Yeah, exactly. They are children. Uh, but as they're home, you know, they're playing in their band, playing some catchy, catchy late 60s tunes. Um, but uh Lord Buckley comes to the house to meet up with Charlie Chan and inform him that they received another message, this time directly to Lord Buckley, that the money needs to be dropped off at 8 p.m. by the old oak tree in the park. And again, it reminds them not to tell anyone about it, especially the authorities. So it's a hilarious side note. Uh, the conversation is like happening like in the office or like just some room in um, the household while all the kids were sitting down to dinner. And Susie, who again is like the proper pretty girl, is like, well, we all have better manners than to eavesdrop on that private adult conversation as she's like eating her food. And then she looks up and every single kid has like a cup to the wall and like stethoscopes <laughs> and is like trying to listen in. And she's like, <gasps> So very funny. That's so uh, Charlie tells the kids to stay home. I'm going to hit the road with Lord Buckley. Um, but Tom Chan, who's the nerdy one, he, he's sus of this situation. And so he goes to his bookshelf and apparently has a book that's like a comprehensive list of all English lords. <laughs> and like royalty and he's like flipping through it and goes aha just as i thought there is no lord buckley he is an imposter um uh, which okay good good shit. good I that guess you found that i don't still stuck on the fact that he has this book where you even yeah, get it's that like, i don't know something that you only pages? had like if you were <laughs> for lords? lords though yeah i thought that was something you only had if you were like a lord maybe he <laughs> yeah. stole it from lord buckley <laughs> he for sure did or <laughs> yeah or like some other mystery i guess maybe when they were in england he picked one up mm-hmm. it's one of the other unclear. lords that hired you know charlie yeah. chan for some other mystery oh, exactly this will be helpful yeah, in the oh, future they won't miss this oh. a giant <laughs> yellow page is like no, <laughs> they're like dragging it out yeah. like attaches it to, than me. to drag <laughs> So um, they all freak out at this information as you would, worrying and realizing that their dad is in trouble because he's with an imposter. But Henry and Stanley, again, the two oldest, are like, y'all, dad probably already knows. This is probably a very elaborate setup. You guys need to all stay home. And like, we can't ruin dad's sting operation. And literally every kid agrees. But we also see that literally every kid is crossing their fingers behind their back. So that leads to separately, they all head to the oak tree to set up their own traps for the thief. So, of course, like any good cartoon mystery detective show, shenanigans ensue in which like each group, they they often split up of like the three youngest the like middle schoolers and again like the eldest teens it's like heart or mm-hmm. um henry and stanley middle schooler younger teens and then like the couple maybe like four youngest again mm-hmm. there's so many kids to keep track of so right. 
again usually shenanigans. groups of three though somehow they're split up in three groups uh, yeah exactly let's just leave it at that it's unclear all what 10 the is. this brood <laughs> yes this is brood exactly so um yes they all uh, basically all fall into each other's traps they all collectively realize that um they all lied to each other <laughs> about not going they're like what are you doing here what are you doing here let me out of this trap help i'm stuck in this hole oh my god it's you etc cetera, etc cetera. so and they all get each other oh out. my god i'm dying oh hey what are you not doing in bed <laughs> wait a second you're not the one who should be dying it should be someone else the, yeah, the thief oh, what are you doing here the mimi <laughs> scooter it's so like the four-year-old <laughs> <laughs> like at the bottom of a pit <laughs> there was a pit you are correct oh. <laughs> i think there was the youngest ones who fell into it because they were too short to get out <laughs> so terrifying <laughs> you're like going for a jog in this park and you just look and there's like four middle schoolers in a cage because that was one of them there's two children in a pit <laughs> I don't know what happened to the other ones, but yeah. yeah. Like that's, hanging that's from a sense. tree like, <laughs> by their ankles or something. <laughs> Little rope trick, probably, honestly. Yeah. Didn't write it down, but yes, most what likely. Here? Just keep, keep running, running, keep running. Keep going. Yeah. Keep going. <laughs> if I don't say anything, I'm not involved. I'm not an accomplice to this. <laughs> right. So, uh, oh, shit, uh, those are Charlie Chan's kids. Get out of here. Get out of here. It's running faster. They get a PR. <laughs> Give me out. <laughs> so, uh, Henry is starting to lecture them all, um, even though he also totally lied and showed up and set a trap and all of that stuff. Um, but, like, they're so used to the oldest brother's, like, lectures. <laughs> One of them <laughs> may have been Nancy. Oh. Uh is like clearly not listening and is just like, oh my God, we skipped dessert after dinner. Wait, but there's an ice cream truck over there. Like, let's just go get dessert. So <laughs> I guess leaning into that comment about Nancy. Slightly <laughs> chunky and really clumsy. Yeah, she, just... she, she didn't hear a word they said. But... Oh, she literally was like, what about dessert? Ice oh my cream. God, there's an ice cream you truck. And there can is relate. an ice cream truck. Can relate. Night. I think yeah. all of us, a lot of us have a little bit of Nancy, not yeah, most, we're all slightly mostly Nancy. Chunky yeah. and pretty clumsy. And I yeah. also want dessert. So I also, oh, ooh, ice cream. <laughs> exactly. What were you saying? Oh, it's not important. I sorry. <laughs> so um that's literally what's happening. They're all about to go get some ice cream, but they hear a car pulling up. And so they're like, oh shit, this is probably the thief coming to get the money. And so they all hide behind the bushes. Um, oh, I should have also said that the briefcase with the money was already under the oak tree. Like Charlie Chan had already gotten there and dropped okay. the um, the briefcase. Yeah. Um, and indeed, a car did pull up. And it's a taxi with a cloaked figure comes out. Or like I guess like a trench-coated figure. Like oh, You can't really see anything. A low hat. Walks out. Waltzes right up to the briefcase and from the kid's angle, like they can't really see what he does exactly. Um, just like from, yeah, what bushes they help, like jumped behind, they're kind of behind the tree. Um, but then they see the figure go back into the taxi, briefcase in hand and drive away. And then seconds later, they see their dad come out in another car, like where he was parked somewhere in hiding and chase the taxi out of the park. And just as they're like, whew, we should have known, dad's got it. One of them gasps when they're like, oh, fuck, actually, dad just got set up and he's in a trap. Because behind the tree, they see another cloaked figure in the exact same long coat and low hat step out, also holding a briefcase. And they're uh -oh. like, wait, what the fuck? We just saw someone get in the car with the briefcase? Who's this with the briefcase? And then he rips off the hat and coat to reveal an ice cream man. What? Or at least someone in an ice cream uniform <laughs> with like an ice cream man's hat on, so the hat underneath the hat. Like a CIA sting operation. <laughs> on like big glasses. <laughs> There's a lot of outfit changes in this episode. And then he oh, runs man. into the ice cream van and drives off. I'm assuming the same ice cream van that Nancy saw. 
Same ice cream van Nancy okay. saw. Okay, I was like, is this yep. town just riddled with ice cream vans <laughs> at night? Nope, this was the same one. Okay. Jumps in, drives off, and the kids all hop on their bikes and scooters and follow him to the museum. No Chan van? No Chan van. Well, Henry and Stanley originally took it there, but they don't take it to the museum. Okay. I guess it's too obvious. Sure. They said they want to yeah. be a gang of kids loudly <laughs> on scooters and bikes in the street instead of just a car that could be in disguise. Anyways, they're children. More threatening. Yeah. Yes. By the way, as a total side note, in the park shenanigans, Choo Choo runs into a undescript brown Great Dane Oh, who looks at Choo Choo and was like, huh? And then Choo Choo growls at the Great Dane and the Great Dane's like, and runs away, which I guess is a big (gasps) finger to Scooby-Doo. Because it looks just like Scooby-Doo, just with no spots. With like, oh, no spots or, and obviously no collar. Uh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it was very funny. I was like, wow, gay. Tell us how you really feel. Yes. So wait, there's... Does that them saying Choo Choo's better than Scooby Doo? I think so. I think they're being oh, like wow, Choo Choo's no. gonna fuck you up. This is mm-hmm. Choo Choo is very clearly like a street dog who's seen some shit. Yeah, I was gonna say now that I agree with Choo Choo would definitely beat Scooby Doo up in a fight. But oh, for I think Scooby Doo's sure. maybe the better all around pet because yes, we yes. know what he is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you gotta be easier to take to the vet. Like, <laughs> yeah. oh, what kind of what kind of animal do you have here? If you're like the Chans, um. Yeah, are they like at an exotic animal pet? Yeah. Are they at like I don't know, like the appliance store for a new mop? Like unclear. So, um, the kids indeed go into the museum, and there is indeed the ice cream man um, who has the briefcase, which is interesting that he went back to the museum. So keep that in mind. Um, but he realizes, obviously, because I pictured that. When they all got to the museum door, all of these kids like just had to like drop their scooters and bikes. So like even if they were being quiet, all of a sudden the ice cream man just heard like a <laughs> of like scooters and bikes and like the thrown. door opening like <laughs> yeah. ten times. Exactly. It's like <laughs> bit, like yeah, get scooters and bikes just get thrown to the side. So they're not the most subtle gang of ten I children. Why they didn't take the chan van? unclear okay never mind. So, go ahead go they ahead. start to chase him down because they're like, we got a corner of this guy we know he's got the briefcase dad is off chasing a red herring like he clearly came back to the museum he's up to no good um they luckily are able to chase him into the dinosaur exhibit mm-hmm. and uh basically like in all good cartoons don't care about um special history. items yeah history they're like you know pull the legs out from underneath or something like that so that the um brontosaurus rib cage falls down on the ice cream man and basically enclose him like a set of jail bar or jail cell mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so just then their dad walks in who like knew that they were going there he realized the other one was a red herring comes back the kids are like <laughs> Okay, sorry. No, go keep going. Never. Are mind. you asking how he knew he was set up with the red herring? Well, yeah, yes. I, well, no, no. More so, how he knew the guy would go back to the museum, and then I guess also assume that the kids mm-hmm. would trap him or that he would somehow get trapped there. I would say that the dad didn't know the kids would trap him there. But okay, the, he just but thought. Charlie knew he'd go back because remember Charlie knows where the jewels are. Yeah. So okay. he perhaps went back to where the jewels are. So maybe somewhere in the museum. But anyways, the kids are like, Dad, we did it, we caught him. And Bird, who do you think is the ice cream man? Would you like me to run through the characters? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we've got an ice cream cream man. (laughs) Cool. We've got Lord Buckley. We've got Igor, museum curator. We've got security officer Johnson. We've got the Chan clan. Don't you don't have to do all them. (laughs) (laughs) We have three hour episode. Yeah. 
Um, um yes. So pretty the so it's like the security guy Igor and <laughs> that's, Igor. that's not even really his name. And the security guy is also not his name. And yeah. Lord Buckley are in the main. Um I, I guess I the so he went back to the I'm gonna guess the curator. So the kids are like, Dad, we did it. We caught Lord Buckley. And Charlie Chan is like, <laughs> it's not Lord Buckley. See, Buckley isn't who he says he is. And with that, Buckley walks out from behind the, I don't know, another fucking room of the museum. As Charlie Chan says, Lord Buckley's actually from Scotland Yard. <laughs> so I guess we're fucking spy buddies. Is that MI6? <laughs> yeah. So I hope this is helping Further your theory it is. with Charlie Chan right now that, yes, um, Lord Buckley is with Scotland Yard slash up by six and um, was in there, was indeed there for this larger sting operation, apparently. <laughs> Go ahead. They knew the jewels will try and be stolen because then Charlie rightfully points out indeed who it actually is. And you're both correct. It's the curator. Ah, okay. Yep. And the curator then rips off his ice cream man uniform to reveal himself. <laughs> like uh, he which, wore one costume already. I guess he could wear another layers, one. Layers. Layers <laughs> yeah. upon layers. He's got like five masks on at a time. Yeah. <laughs> and so <sighs> he says, basically, like, y'all aren't going to get the jewels back unless you let me go. But Charlie is like, I've already told you I know where the jewels are. Um, I just need you to incriminate yourself first, which you just did. So Charlie Chan walks back to the display cabinet and the kids are like, yeah, dad, we know the jewels are gone. What are we doing here? And yeah. he was like, and, oh, and they're like, dad, there are no clues here. And Charlie says, exactly. There are no clues. Isn't that hella suspicious? There was no broken glass or nothing. Right. So on the display cabinet, Charlie like reaches down basically below it to this little tiny button that like blends in with the cabinet and Charlie pushes it. And in that moment, the shelves of the display cabinet descend and are replaced with shelves that have all of the jewels on them. Oh. And then Charlie hits it again and the jeweled shelves go beneath and the blank shelves come back up. Oh, uh, so they were there the whole so, time. They were there the whole time. And okay. Charlie explains it was the lack of clues and the cleanliness of the job that was obviously suspicious as hell. Yeah. And <laughs> he's like, no one, no one could get around my trap that I set. Did you fuck that? No, 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 no. The this electrocuted was an metal bars. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Oh, he knew it's in such a job from the get go. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's and like, I get the also... best of the best for my government contractors. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't get Scotland Yard and MI6 involved for nothing. Right. Um, and so he also explains that, if you remember, he said that Choo Choo was indeed very helpful. And it's hmm. actually because of Choo Choo that Charlie Chan was also able to figure this out because when Choo Choo jumped up on the cabinet, when the jewels were in the display case, his nose reached the shelves. But on the blank display case, his nose was beneath the shelves. Thus, it uh... indicated something with the shelving changed in between jewels, no jewels, jewels, yeah. no jewels. And he solved at the end. Cool. Okay. Wow. Great yep. job. <laughs> <laughs> what a mystery. What a great... Wow, the riders most, took, took um, us on a journey there. <laughs> most uh, uh, art thieving cases are indeed inside jobs from the mm. museum, so it makes sense. Igor, they knew it back then. It still holds true today. Mm -hmm. Igor, I assume I did it. No, yeah, I think it does. First hand knowledge of this whatsoever. I've never worked in a museum. Don't worry about it. Mm -mm. Don't worry about what? It. What is? What even is a museum? Uh, mm. So <laughs> there you go. Awesome. So yeah, I I'm just gonna like 
say it now, generally the basis of my wild speculation about Mr. Chan is that Mm -hmm. he is this, like, he himself is a contractor, like not a mercenary, obviously, but like the the equivalent (laughs) for like private investigators and detectives, like known by all the wealthiest of the wealthiest in the country, known by all the major like intelligence operations Mm. and like bureaus of investigation, the UN and shit just like hires him like on contract for jobs, but they let him bring his kids because they know that it always like is a ruse that gets the criminal off track or some <laughs> shit <laughs> thinking that they're in the clear but then nope we got gotcha. you because the kids are always interfering in these investigations and making <laughs> the criminal think like oh yeah i'll get away with this Bye. like they're pointing they're they're investigating these people over here or whatever what's going on <laughs> and then boom now I... charlie gets them I do think that is correct. I did write down originally, like, I think he's maybe like a PI, but like a PI, a PI plus type yeah. of thing. Um, Cause yeah, it does do like security and stuff. And I think that makes sense with the kids that like, that's part of like the contract. Like when you hire Bring him, your kids, it's like, <laughs> would you like the kid edition or not kid edition? Like kid edition means more distraction, easier case mm-hmm. type of thing. So yeah, because no one is ever upset. That the kids are there. Like everyone no, loves normal. his kids or like the law enforcement people. Yeah. Like, no one like blinks to, like, an eye. No, they're like, oh yeah, the whole champ family's here. Cool. Let's yeah. let's solve this <laughs> mystery. Yeah. <laughs> and at the same time, he's like, being a single dad is hard. A single parent yes. household. Help me out. What yeah. does to do with these kids? Yeah, I well, mean, and to be fair, they like watch over themselves on all of these mysteries what are we already. To do with these kids? <laughs> <laughs> and it was the seventies, so they were probably like, "He doesn't have a wife at home to take care of the children. This poor man. Yeah, he must bring them." Which I mean, true. Once you get past like, I mean, ten kids is a lot. <laughs> I, I too would be like, "Oh my god, dude, you need a wife to help you take care." Of, like, or you need a village or whatever. Yeah, you've you grown a village. village. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you need like you need ten villages. <laughs> I do like to think though that even though the again fandom page said that Charlie Chan's either widowed or divorced, I like to think that he's divorced and just like <laughs> and this is like cool weekends custody. with dad. <laughs> oh no. It's like always on these mystery cases. Wait, yeah, I kind of like that better. Yeah, yeah. But he's like always he's always Friday. on the clock, though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's always on the clock. So even even when they go on a trip, where did this episode uh-huh. take place? Your did was it like? I have no idea. Oh, just some. Okay, damn. Somewhere. Well, weekend with Dad. Hey, we're going to the museum secretly. Yeah. Dad's like, oh yeah, we're going to the museum. We sure are. A very That's educational like, weekend. That to the chans, like that is what going to the museum is. They like hear <laughs> their friends talk about going and like seeing an exhibit. They're like, oh, we thought that you went to museums to stop jewel. Th- thieves they like <laughs> one of them like flip like has like a school field trip to the museum and immediately just like rips the dinosaur bones out because he's like that's what you do right he like finds you know, the curator you know, and like property. tries to rip his face off yeah like, take off your mask <laughs> <laughs> this is how museums go that's what we did last time with dad yeah. so yep there we go that's the first amazing chan and the chan clan episode wonderful wonderful yes, can't wait I can't wait to keep it going i think this will be a very fun arc um i'm very excited for it and between now and next week when you do your first uh episode who should our listeners tell um about this uh podcast um show? i think this week you should find uh a teacher and mm. tell them because essentially like If you thought that wrangling the Chan clan was tough, imagine (laughs) doing two times the Chan clan, (laughs) like all day. So uh, yeah, essentially that's what teachers have to do. Uh, Find one of them, tell them that's easy for us. You know, a teacher, she's probably already watching. Yeah. Hey girls. But thank them and tell them to listen to this podcast. (laughs) Yes. To help get them through it. Maybe also like donate some supplies to them because they Mm -hmm. have to pay for their own supplies oftentimes. Um, And then after that, um, find a private investigator, find a PI. (laughs) No, I'm not here to hire you. I'm here to make a recommendation for you. Nice. And if they're a good PI, they've already recommendation. (laughs) 
Yeah, podcast wreck. <laughs> Not even like, like a lead you on might a job. Get some good ideas for your own business. <laughs> nice, so, nice. Yeah, tell a PI and um till next week. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to Saturday Morning Mysteries. If you enjoyed this episode, please share, rate, review, leave us a like, and drop a comment. We post episodes every Saturday and bonus tune tangents whenever we feel like it. So please subscribe so you don't miss the shenanigans. And if you want to follow us on YouTube, click the bell under the YouTube subscribe button to receive notifications when new videos are posted. And if you want to subscribe to the podcast, we have no idea what you're listening to us on. So just hit the big subscribe button on whatever app you're using. We we believe in you. Give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram at Satmore Mist, all the abreeds. And let us know if you have any episode or show requests by emailing Saturday Morning Mysteries at gmail.com. Thanks to Jenna Kendall for the logo design and to Ava Sakiki for the music used during this week's episode. See y'all groovy kids next week on Saturday Morning Mysteries. Bye.